Om Shanti, good morning. Today is the blessing of 12th of January 2019. May you be full of success by having faith in the intellect and finishing any web of weak thoughts. May you be full of success by having faith in the intellect and finish any web of weak thoughts. Until now, weak thoughts emerge in the majority of children. They think, I don't know whether something will happen or not, or what will happen. These weak thoughts become a wall, and success gets hidden behind that wall. Maya spins a web of waste thoughts, and you become trapped in that web. Therefore, with the awareness of having faith in the intellect, being victorious and having the birthright of success, finish weak thoughts. So there are countless stories in the Yajna, in the history of our Yajna, of how faith in the intellect has brought success on all levels. There are Brahma Baba stories and of course many of us were not around to see it for ourselves, but we hear about it and we hear it from our seniors and they are amazing stories, miraculous stories. Then there are stories with Dadi Janki or the Dadis that are still around. And so one very practical example that I saw in front of my eyes was the building of Global Corporation House. In London there was a need for a space for many years and uh, whilst we could find the ideal place and uh, gathered the funds, we were using a local community hall. One brother uh, was working in the council and he was able to get it for free. So we were basically using it uh, morning uh, for Murli class. So at night the youth would have it, the Lokik youth, and they would be having discos and smoking and drinking and in the morning, the same five dedicated uh, souls would go and clean and mop up and lay the carpet, the chairs, uh, put out Brahma Baba pictures, light some agarbatis, and the atmosphere would change into Baba's classroom. And several hundred were coming to class, and, and so there was really a need for this space. Finally, we got the land and a building, and then Baba was asked about it through a trans messenger. And Baba said that that building should be demolished and we should build a new building. Taylor build a new building. So it was enough getting the land, but uh, where to pay for a new building? So Daddy Janki kept courage and one company was given uh, the contract. And he was an Indian, <clears throat> and by chance his name was Lakshman. So Daddy would often laugh with him and say, who is going to do Ram's work? Who is going to do God's work? It's of course Lakshman, because Lakshman is uh, Ram's uh, loyal brother in the Ramayan. So when the project started, it was estimated at two million pounds. And I don't know the exact accounts at that time. Uh, that was not my area. But I don't believe that there was even £200,000, uh, maybe even £20,000. Yet Dadi kept courage and she kept saying, the money will come, the money will come. And sure enough, every time we had to pay the contractor by month end, there would be enough money in the bank. And the project ended up costing £6 million. Because when you start, you never really know what's involved. And uh, with all the furniture, equipment, um, it ended up being about six million. I'm sure had they known, I'm sure had Dadi and Gentiman known, it would be six million. I'm not sure if they would have started. But that's how the drama happened. And uh, that's how actually the building was named Global Corporation House. Because it was with the cooperation of everyone around the world that the house was built. In the same way, uh, in the beggary part, you know, Brahma Baba has demonstrated many times faith in his intellect, faith in Baba. So many mornings, Bolidadi would come and ask Baba, 
uh, what should we cook today? What should we cook for breakfast? And uh, this morning, um, there was nothing in the store. And she said to Baba, what should we make? There's nothing. And Baba would say, tell the children that we will be going on a picnic. Make, make some popcorn. And when they got there, wherever, the rock, wherever they were meant to be heading, then Baba would play this game of shooting the popcorn into their mouths. And they had to ensure that it got into their mouth. And this was a sweet game of hit and miss. And they all had fun and joy. And uh, of course, just being with Baba was a lot of fun. Amidst all this, they forgot that they hadn't eaten breakfast. By then, uh, some post would be arriving at Pando Bhavan, And sure enough, there was some money uh, or a money order. And so Baba would ask Vishwakesh or Dada to go change that and then buy some flour and veggies in the market. And by noon, lunch would be ready for the children. And Dadis have said this, these kinds of things happen many times. And they were young and they were not aware actually what was going on. But their love was the nourishment. Their love was the food. There's another story uh, where Baba had wanted to feed the children jalebi this delicious uh, swirly orange colored uh, sweet made with lots of syrup. It's a favorite of the Indians. So Mama said, uh, but Baba, there is nothing to make jalebi with. How will we feed the children jalebi today? So Baba said, just wait and see. And then Baba was taking the children out of the gates of Pandobon for a round. And uh, then Baba said to Mama, you see that lady coming? She's coming to you. So Baba went on his way and then the lady approached Mama and gave her an envelope. And then she explained the story. She said that her husband wanted to give the money to some guru and she had wanted to give it to these goddesses, that is these sisters in Pandubhavan. Um, her, her husband insisted that no, we should give it to his guru. Then when he went to sleep, in his sleep, her husband had a dream that his guru is telling him that the money you wanted to give to me, give it to these goddesses. And uh, that's how she came and gave the money. So in this way, everyone got jalebi that day, but also uh, that money lasted for one week. In other words, they could feed everyone for a whole week. So it's time to check today, do we have such faith in the intellect that Baba is here and he will provide? I too have similar experience of when I was living in Turkey that there would be just enough every time we had to pay the rent. And so it's really first-hand experience that Baba, you know, Baba's there for us. So why does Baba say faith in the intellect? And it's because the intellect is what we need to convince. The job of the mind is to just create thoughts. It does not have decision-making power. Also, Baba says buddhi yog, right? which means yoga, using or applying the intellect. And then he says, man mere me lagao, which means turn your mind towards me. But remember, the mind plays no role in making decisions. So yes, if the eyes go on the jalebis, then the mind will create thoughts of wanting to eat them. But it's uh, the intellect that will eventually decide. The mind is simply tempting the intellect by sending these thoughts its way. So to reduce the workload for the intellect of filtering and deciphering and deciding, Baba says, turn your mind towards me and me alone. So just as love is in the intellect and that love makes one loving, so too if there is faith in the intellect, that makes one faithful. And this is, I think, the difference between the two, the love, loving intellect then one then makes one faithful or loving then there is the aspect of trust right trust is built with time it is based on uh, 
evidence of repeated actions over time. So when you trust someone, it's because they have won your trust. They have proved to you time and again that they did not steal or lie or cheat you. Faith, on the other hand, has no proof, right? We are asked to have faith when we don't have proof still. So by having faith, our intention is to turn the faith into trust, into action. In other words, I have faith in God. So if I have faith in God, I put some things out there to him. God, please do this or don't do that. Make this happen. So say these things go the way I wished. And in this way, I build the trust that there is a God or I have faith in God. I begin to have faith. Like yesterday, we were reading um, about Sister Prabha of Baruch Center. And she was saying that her mother and father would argue over his smoking. And for a long time, uh, the mother kept telling the father, please stop smoking, and he never did. Then finally, one day after visiting Baba's center, he stopped smoking. Right, Just one day he went, next day he stopped smoking. And that convinced them that there is something here. And so Baba has actually said the answer in the blessing, and that is that faith is not for the weak, right? Faith is not weak thoughts. It is powerful thoughts. It's the weak thoughts that create a web which trap us, which then don't allow us to manifest what we want. Because we're doubting ourselves. In, in the weakness, we are doubting ourselves. So you create that thought and then you believe that it will happen, meaning you accept it before it is proven to you. And what happens when there is continued demonstration of faith? Then we call it normality, right? For example, if we sow a seed and it grows, we now think it's normal. Yes, of course the seed would grow, but imagine when the first seed was sown. They must have had to have the faith. Imagine when the first boat was set to sail or when the first plane was flown. That's when you have to have the faith that it will happen. It hasn't happened yet, but you have the faith. And turn the faith into action, into trust. And um, isn't it also amazing? I find it's, I love trees and seeds and it's so amazing how the seed knows exactly which part is the trunk and the root and the branch and the fruit and it's a marvel of nature but because it's repeated over time and again we now treat it as normal and automatically trust that the seed will grow we do not need to have faith uh, per se so faith is created for those things not yet happened not yet manifested for the unknown for the undetermined once someone asked Dadi, Dadi, how do I know I'm having good yoga? I don't think I'm having good yoga. And Dadi asked her, has your life changed over the last six months? And she replied, yes, Dadi. And then Dadi said, your yoga is good. It's working. So what is our product as Brahma Kumaris? I'm not referring to literature or CDs, but... What are we offering to people? What are we selling to people? What idea are we selling to the people? And that is energy, vibration, power. This is our product. So we are asking people to believe, to have faith, that by sitting down quietly for a few moments in solitude and by creating elevated thoughts, we can manifest things such as peace, love, light, power into our life. And in the case of Baba, also wealth and cooperation. So Baba was convinced of this. Are we convinced of this in our lives? Do we believe that the same is possible for us? That there is enough of everything in the world? So if we believe there is enough of everything in the world, then why is it not coming to me? And that is because I do not have the powerful enough thought 
that I deserve it. And this is the key. The faith in the intellect creates this aspect of I deserve. I deserve to go to the golden age. I deserve to become a king. And from that place, then I'm able to make the effort. So this deserving comes from that seat of self-respect. That's why it's so important to cultivate healthy self-respect. There's a lovely saying in the Middle East, tie your camel and then leave the rest to God. So it needs to be faith with action, not non-action. In other words, not that I just say it will happen and then I sit on my high horse doing nothing. No, I need to make it happen. In other words, I need to follow that thought with a powerful deed. I do my 50% and then leave the other 50% to God, to faith. And there is a lovely plaque in the center here that footprints in history are not made by sitting down. So I need to get up and do something. I need to make it happen. So once I sit on my seat of self-respect, it can happen, not on the seat of ego. I cannot dictate to drama. I have to respect drama and everything can manifest. Why not? If we are creating a new world, a golden aged world, where everything is made of gold, and if we can't manifest a few pounds or dollars here, then where is our energy going? We will have all the time in heaven. Why can't we manifest time here in the Confluence Age? We are master creators. So the reason why we can't manifest is because our ego doesn't allow it. We can have inverted ego, which is low self-esteem, or overt ego, which is thinking too much of myself. And in between is the genuine self-respect. And in this kind of self-respect, I respect the drama and everyone, and I respect myself too. Not that I respect myself more and others less, or the drama less. No. Baba is saying in the Sunday Avyat Murli that wasteful thoughts are the subtle strings of some bondage of karma. So to create waste and negative is also karmic, actually. It is just in someone's fate to be negative and, and of course they'll reap negative consequences. And no one can help that soul but itself. So ego creates many thoughts because the ego is insecure and so it's always trying to find ways of securing itself. Opposite of ego is faith, is trust. So trust that you will always receive what you, the soul, needs. So Baba is saying today, become victorious and claim the birthright of success. So let us really keep that blessing in our awareness. I'd now like to end with one more story of Mama Baba. And that is that there was Mama Baba and a Kumari. And Baba was trying to fit a cupboard into the corner. And Baba said, I don't think this will fit. And the little Kumari said, yes, Baba, it, it will fit. And so she got in there and she started moving the cupboard and it fit in the corner. So Baba said, very good. And Baba left. But Mama didn't look too happy. And she walked off, but the Kumari thought, mm, what have I done wrong? So later in the day, she went to ask Mama, Mama, did I do something wrong? And then Mama said, See, now that you have proven that you were right, then you'll always think that you know better than Baba. So even now when Baba gives you some advice, you'll always think that, well, maybe I can use my intellect and I know better. So Mama said uh, it would have been wiser to just leave it and allow Baba in that moment. In that moment, you would have, you know, killed your ego, sacrificed your ego and the fact that you know better. 
So this is the lesson for all of us, isn't it? That we need to really kill the ego in those moments when we think we know we are right. And um, we even test God, test Baba. So wishing you a very successful day today in Baba's remembrance. Om Shanti.